Thank you for this very um, cool presentation that you brought. Do we have any questions? Yeah, we, where do I start? I'll go back to the beginning. Go to time forms inherent to the works of art and ephemerality um, inherent to works of art. My question is, um, do you think this is justified for a longer time? Thanks, I, I used the term own time. I think we have to ask about a piece of art's own time. Some statue has quite another half-life, an old time, and thus needs to be dealt with quite differently than the contemporary work of art that I saw. And I think... Um, Linus Neumann's presentation talking about destruction of works of art and how that increases the value of those pieces of art was the perfect follow-up to my presentation. You also showed this structure of time. There is one event which becomes a work of art by repeating and repeating and repeating it again. <laughs> I used quite different works of art than you did. But I really like the wall at the House of Red Flora. This the Soko wall and color, this in itself is a reference that you need to know and which becomes uh, even greater when you see this um, TV um, program that we saw, that you showed us. So I think the question is what time structures do we have within a work of art? I would like to go back to what you told us. So, a statue, you said a statue has a different own time than the photo that you showed us. This would also imply a very strange dealing with values, if you allow me to say that. However, when having such a photo, artwork, um, you also really have to think about where you place it, what weather conditions it will be exposed to. But, but really attributing a value um, to those um, to those times, I think that's a problematic approach. I explicitly did not say value. I talked about time. I do not want to say that value is connected to um, times and ephemerality and we just saw in the second presentation that um, something that is very has, has a very short duration can have very great value. The only thing I wanted to say is that there are different works of art that have different times own times as I said. I think Art is, what's great about art is there are references um, that can date back hundreds of years. And we have to ask ourselves whether those traditions are still important to us or if they're not. We talked about 
dealing with objects, if we attribute an own time to those objects, which, because people don't know any better or because of the materials. Ist ja eine Problematik, wenn man daraus sozusagen die eigenen Eigenzeitanspruch auch I think it might be problematic to have this own time um, as an approach. I think when it comes to materials, I would postulate that an artist chooses the material that he or she wants for this work of art. Of course, you could ask whether um, they really wanted that material or maybe they, they miscalculated, but I would suggest that artists choose the right material for their works of art. Gebäude architektonisch plant oder so. When planning a building, diese Fragen äh, ganz entscheidend sind. These are very important questions, which materials to use, etc. Das, das richtige Material. But even there, I would say, the, I, I guess the right material will have been chosen. And over to you. The You, you pointed to the question of property, which we had not, or ownership, which we had not given enough importance yet. After all, ownership was always an important factor when it came to preserving objects or endangering them. Protestantischen Bildersturm, katholische Werke in Nürnberg. Even when also that selbst solche große. Even when um, Catholic objects were removed, sometimes they were not removed because they belonged to a certain family. I think ownership and property is a really important issue. Kann gemacht haben. Also das fand ich noch einmal ein ganz wichtiger Punkt, dass ich that was as i said interessanten Punkt der Debatte a very interesting aspect of our discussion and the second aspect that i found really important was um, status of documentation i like you said as well um, objects or works of art have develop their own lives, so to speak. On, it was only documentation that um, enabled um, graffiti artists, for example, to show the public what the works they created. And I think this is an important aspect for our discussion about archiving. Das uh, wollte ich erstmal als uh, wichtigen Beitrag, den ich hier gesehen habe. Uh, um, so that was something that I wanted to point out as two important aspects. Kann das ganz Another question that oder wie weit can be derived from that is how far can that go? Als, uh, you cited selfies as a form of documentation. Where will that go in the future? I sometimes ask myself whether people archive, do that to archive it, whether they are, can't, they are aware of the fact that this is archived. The, all those Instagram phenomena are relatively new and I am not sure what to make of it. There are people who take pictures of themselves only all the time, which I find fascinating because I hate taking pictures of myself. Because wherever I like, look, I see something more more interesting than myself because I know myself, I know the way I look. But we also have to say that not everything has to be art. If we take on a his, 
a historic perspective on um, art. I don't know, people that were painted, other people that weren't. Um, there was always somebody who decided whether something was archived or wasn't. There was always somebody who decided whether to leave a statue or not. Um, I've learned yesterday that this concerns a statue in Vienna as well, and it definitely concerns statues in the U U United States. And I think it's really interesting that we have we face those decisions nowadays. Um, Just think about MySpace, which was very popular and then was shut off. So even though digital archiving actually is very, very cheap, I think we will continue to see the same losses as we see through destruction, wars, losses, um, inappropriate material. Würden Sie denn das Netz überhaupt als Archiv bezeichnen? Would you call the Internet an archive? Are there, there are similar structures of archiving, collecting things? Astoundingly, it would have all the characteristics it needs, but it doesn't. We regularly um, are unable to find things that we put under a link just half a year later. I don't think Facebook or Twitter are going to delete anything, but it's not orderly. And archive... It, it, there's the internet archive, for example, trying to archive content, but will not succeed because there are too many contents. However, there, it is possible to use this internet archive to look at contents from before. And that way we see that the internet does not archive. It's just something that lives in the present. And it's just accidental, the things that remain and the things that do not remain. Wenn wir heute gehört haben von Uta Hassler, Uta Hassler um, said archive is selecting, needs to select. Überlegung der Selektion. Do you have a similar approach of selection? Endlichen Anhäufung von Daten. Wie kann man dann against the wealth of data? How would such an such selection work in the Internet Archive? Or will those photos um, compile and pile up and pile up and um, this that this is sort of a paradox. Well, storage becomes cheaper and cheaper. I, my computers always have more storage than I uh, needed, yet I was able to fill it up. At the same time, I have so many images um, Wenn ich jetzt jedes Bild eine that I take in my private life. If I looked at every picture for just a second, I do not know how many days I would spend doing this. So we over-archive, I'd say. Um, if you have an iPhone or a Mac, there's this face recognition software, um, uh, software then asking you, do you want to see other pictures by Linus or Cornelia or trying to surprise you with a film from your, from your memories, saying, look, you had, you, you used, you enjoyed that meal in Berlin, or this or that. So I think the machines try to make use of all those archives. I recently heard a term that saying that as we there's no need for deletion, we just pile up stuff. 
Und heute finden wir sie nicht, weil es... Um, Formerly, we did not find information because we didn't know where to look, and now we don't find them because we just have too much. So we have these questions of too, having too much, documenting too much, archiving too much, uh, thus resulting in our inability to find things. And going back to the start our, of our um, discussion, having more and more objects in public space which age, which are destroyed, provocant question, would it suffice um, to just put them into another archive? Um, not storing it um, physically, but just storing it in an image archive, for example? Ich weiß nicht, ob ich da eine allgemeine Antwort geben kann. I don't think I can give a general answer to this question. I think we need to renegotiate answers to this question again and again. Another question is during the winter fountains are covered so that they um, will be able to, um, to endure for a longer time so we could make a calculation and see how much longer they will survive but on the other hand if we don't see them for five months a year every year will they pay off so I think there are certain pieces of art for which Ephemer the ephemerality and their vanishing is a part of their um, artistic process. I would never restore them. You would never conserve them in any collection either. Other objects of art, however, can be archived that way. But I do not want to give you a, a general answer. Materialdarwinismus, den Sie betreiben? Are, do I see a sort of Darwinistic approach to materials? What do you mean? Wenn das Material nur hart genug ist, dann kann es... If material is durable enough, it can stay, the rest can't. And if I hear what you say about, um, about those fountains... Is, do you think that is the answer? Just using uh, an object of art's own time? I think nobody accidentally uses one material or the other. I can't compare uh, something made out of stone with something made out of paper and Uh, submitted to the same conditions. If you do that and say, well, we'll see what will be destroyed first, I think then you could call that a Darwinistic approach to material. But I think pieces of art are, do have some sight where they are. But I think that some art Artists might ask for for titanium if only the commissioner would let them. Titanium, however, would not be appropriate to certain object artworks. But maybe our difference is that I do not see ephemerality as something negative. I think it is there is a great value to be attributed to allowing something to fall into disarray or letting go of something. I this is why I said, um, okay, some pieces of art might be as 
valuable because they were only able to be seen under certain conditions for a certain time. Like the statue of Daphne that we saw earlier that will have to be cared for again and again. At one point, you we will have to say, um, well, that's not enough. Uh, well, we know Miss Büttner is a critical spirit asking again and, get, and again. That's the same thing she did with me when we prepared for this conference. Um, that's why we ask her to be here today. I would like to add something that I saw in this answer. We are always... Um, we are always prone to cliches. My cliché being that we often consider a church as the master of conservation. Objects are put into the cellar for a hundred years and then it's taken back out and shown again. And the other side is Banksy is um, we of, always say Banksy is um, something that will vanish, but that's not the case. Together with my colleague Klaus-Jürgen Bauer, we agreed that you are theologists our um, Hölderlin specialist might um, be um, represent that part of our discussion, but having you championing um, the short term is something that we did not expect. It was really interesting to see how you only used two pictures. And I think this is something that I will continue to think about. And I would like to read out a question now that we received over the internet. Hello. I would like to point to a documentary a facet. We publish material, more than 104,000 objects, like text, text portfolios, catalogs, etc., that can be seen online on www.basiswien.at where well, we talked about destruction of public art. There are press articles that are a specific source and often are the only thing archived of such objects of art. As one example, I would like to use Gottfried Bechtholz's work destroyed in 2010. There are two press releases that are the only source um, documenting this destruction. And I would like to remember Hans Hake's work um, distracted in 1986. Thank you for this conference, but as I am not yet able to attend for um, health reasons, I am not able to attend Helene Bauer. Thank you, Helene Bauer, for your input. But I think this is an input and not a question, or does anybody make a, want to make a statement? No, but all the best to you, Ms. Bauer. So I would like to open the discussion and ask you if there are questions from the audience. Sie gehen danach. Danach, bitte. Na, ich möchte zwei Kunstwerke im öffentlichen Raum 
I would like to mention two works of art, public art which define this definition of time. I was um, in Paris um, recently seeing um, the Arc de Triomphe, um, which was veiled. This work of art was intended to last for two weeks only. Then, however, it will become part of our collective memory as millions of people see it, fo take photographs. So, this concept is, has a very sharp um, definition of time, taking um, certain objects, using them, and then releasing them again. In Vienna, we had a work by Laurence Wiener, which was actually intended to endure, but then was destroyed earlier than anticipated of, due to economic or other interests of the city. And I think this is a very negative example. The Arc de Triomphe um, example by Christo um, was a one, one example in Vienna. However, it was not intended to destroy Lorenz Wiener's work. So when we're talking about time in the public sphere, this, these are two um, things that I wanted to, to mention. I am um, editor of FAIR magazine, and we had a focus on public art. You can um, still get these magazines focused Focusing on public art, we also um, reported on Christo's intent of working with the Flaktürme in Vienna. Auf die unterschiedliche Zeitlichkeit und das ist Thank you for pointing to different times. I guess this might be a question to uh, the artists in here. The way artists define time. Das Zeitfenster oder den Zeitraum mitdenken. Auch die Many artists do um, think about time and processes as part of their works of art. However, I think that this is something different than responsibility of owners and those commissioning works of art for works of art that are not considered to have a specific time because it's those property owners that need to guarantee that this time frame um, will not be shortened. What do you think about the responsibility of those owners? I think it is a violent act to destroy a work of art. I think this is a very... Um, a very strong impact on uh, on the own time of a work of art which would have continued to exist if it hadn't been destroyed. However, um, freshening up the paint is not part of that. I'm not against restoring works of art. This can be really useful. I just wanted to say I don't think that there might be works of art for which that, that is not useful. There might be works of art which want to make ephemerality visible, their own ephemerality visible as well. And there might be other works of art where this aspect is not part of this um, work of art and where restoring can be really useful. We, um, Mr. Deibel, you chose a work of art, Gorja Hall, um, which was about weather-worn um, 
circumstances. Are there any other questions before we start our um, before we start our coffee break? Please use the microphone. Some monuments, thousands of monuments by Tito, Hitler, Stalin were destroyed. But what we forget is that those also served as a warning how not to do it. I don't think it's a good thing to destroy them. I think it would be good to just leave them there. You could also deal, treat those with an ironic approach. There are, um, there is a, a park somewhere in Germany, I think, where such statutes are um, assembled, thus giving them a sort of strange aspect, having them all together. You wanted to add something? I just wanted to make just a, a completely different statement because I um, compared your two presentations. You said that digital world um, increases in value as it um, is destroyed, and the same holds true for Jesus. He was he just that valuable because he was killed so i think that might be necessary might have been necessary for the catholic church if he hadn't died we might not have learned about him i think if jesus hadn't died and would still live i think he'd be va pretty valuable thank you what a conclusion